sold our house and been living in this trailer for about a year now. And we love it because it allows us to camp in beautiful places like this for free. And while most of this lifestyle is great, some of the chores that come along with it are, well, no. Nah. At your house or apartment when you flush the toilet or wash your dishes in the sink, you don't really ever have to think about where it goes. But we constantly have to be thinking about how much dirty water and other stuff we have in our trailer's tanks. And then move it and dump them when they get too full. From getting mail to doing laundry and a lot of things that other people don't think about, our chores look a lot different than they used to. So if you're considering RVing or just want to watch us do our chores? We're going to bring you along for the ride. We always try to do our chores on days that we're moving, but somehow it always turns into an all day adventure. And somehow I feel like today is not going to be any different. So we better get a move on starting with showering. In full transparency, we definitely don't shower as much as we used to when we live in a house because we can only hold a limited amount of gray water. But if we run out, it's easy enough to run into town and fill up the six gallon jerry can. But we do still have to be conscious of water usage and take short showers because our gray water tank can only hold 24 gallons. On days when we're moving and dumping anyway, we can take as long and luxurious showers as we want. Well, at least the three gallons that our hot water tank holds. P.S. Even on our luxurious days, we still have to take navy showers. Got a fella that's cute and yellow and chubby. Rubber dubber ducky. You know it's laundry day when Justin is putting on his last clean white undershirt. Don't make fun of my white shirt. <laughs> All right, now that we're nice and clean, it is time to dump our poop. Not the teeth. <laughs> The teeth make it look so much worse. You've created a monster. It kind of looks like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. So if you're the kind of RVer who prefers paid campgrounds with full hookups, worrying about utilities just isn't as big of a deal for you. But us, on the other hand, we rely on boondocking and free camping across North America. In last week's video, we talked all about how we find boondocking spots. In a nutshell, it keeps us out of noisy campgrounds, saves us tens of thousands of dollars, and lets us stay in just incredibly beautiful places. So if you haven't already, be sure to watch that video. We've actually had a pretty easy time finding both water and dump stations in Alaska for free. We use an app called iOverlander. We usually try to find a one-stop shop for both of them, but this time we're gonna have to make two separate stops. On dump days, we take advantage of the fact that we have extra water and we just take long, luxurious showers because the next thing that we're gonna go do is fill up our tank and dump all the waste. It's just kind of unfortunate because right after I take a nice hot long shower and get clean, I end up dumping our poop. Just found this uh, Chevron that has a dump station. Oh, there it is. Man, I am so glad we have a tiny RV because I have no idea how big RVs would get to this. You're gonna have to help me back up to this. This might be one of the tightest. Uh, I almost hit the, okay. the white pole. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, that is a little bit further away than I typically. I think our hose is 10 feet long, so that should be able to reach. Get my hand sanitizer bottle ready. Cap open right here so I don't have to touch the car door after i mean i wear gloves when i dump but justin raw dogs it i do not raw dog the hose if it's at like a municipality like a city uh sometimes it'll be free and then we'll just go dump but most time free dump stations are at gas stations to incentivize you to buy stuff so uh we always make sure to at least fill up our tank with gas okay put that thing in there don't want to stare in there for too long this is actually pretty good most dump stations tilt at funny angles. This one tilts downhill, so gravity kind of helps. And it's clean. Well, it's uh, definitely not as easy as flushing your toilet at home and is exponentially more gross, but you get used to it. I think we paid like $200 a month for sewer when we lived in Seattle. Yeah, that's right. It's kind of cool that we have a free sewer and water bill. So black tank's empty. Now we're doing our gray tank. So one thing that we see people do at these dump stations 
where they have signs that say non-potable water is fill up jerry cans for fresh water and you definitely don't want to do that because these hoses go inside little poop hoses and that's really really gross and probably bad for your health too I try to not get any of this water on my feet because that's pretty freaking gross oh see oh no oh god it's clean water justin you just flush the hose dumping down ready to go get some water let's do it okay said I was part of the fire firehouse. Oh, that's a first. The fire station lets you fill your RV tank? I guess. It's an high overlander. Attention. All water users, no commercial use authorized. I think that's us. That's very nice of them. That's this bizarre. is so interesting. Should we open it? I think so. I feel kind of Huh. What is that? I definitely don't think we're gonna be able to attach to this. Oh, wait. Is that, does this, oh, look at that. Oh, it goes from like fireman connector <laughs> to hose connector. I guess this is like a quick coupler. This is definitely uh, the most unique. Hold this up. was not intentional for the YouTube video. Maybe it, this is, oh yeah, this is also an adapter. Okay. <gasps> You're are a you, bona fide are you, fireman. Are you proud of me? Very proud. Okay, I think that should be good enough. I'll just kind of like, here, stand back. Okay, I just won't open it all the way. That's a lot of pressure. So we're gonna fill up our jerry can. I bet it's clean water, but this is our water filter. Wow, that's so bizarre. Well, I'm wondering like, what's up with this setup? <laughs> Why is there like a cage? Who that's not a commercial <laughs> operation would be using this. Maybe firefighters? No, I mean, they've gotta have their, oh, maybe they fill up their own trucks here? Yeah. No, yeah. the fire station's across the street. That's weird. I wonder what this is about. It's like normal. Yeah, it's like not bad. <laughs> now we just wait about four or five minutes. Jess, this has uh, only been filling for like two minutes and it's already 78% full. That is some intense water pressure. We're almost half already Look i know at that. it's going pretty quick can you do me a favor yeah can you go turn off the water yeah call me fire lady schmidt we have to be really careful with how much weight we tow around uh fortunately we're not going super far today so not only are we topping off our tank uh, because we're going to be staying there for a while but we're also going to fill up our jerry can as well because uh, we're not going up any mountain passes or steep grades <laughs> So what's next? Laundry time. We need to do laundry really bad. Okay, see you there. One of the hardest things about finding a laundromat is a place where we can actually park our RV. We pull up these laundromats on Google Maps and we look at the satellite view and it looks like this one has no real place for us to park uh, long ways. Really what you want is like a laundromat that's in a strip mall or a grocery store parking lot. So you can kind of park in the back out of the way. You're not at risk of other people running into you. The uh, laundromat that was in town here was a little too small. So we're gonna go a little out of order here. We found a Walmart. We're gonna take advantage of the fact that we are at a super Walmart in a smaller town because we were just at a Walmart in Anchorage a couple weeks ago and it was a little sketchy on the outside. Yeah, there was like unfortunately some homeless encampments and there were lots of people walking around that seemed like they were maybe on drugs. Um, so this one looks a lot cleaner. Uh, yeah, it looks like a, like a ski lodge. Honestly, it's one of the, the nicer Walmarts I've ever seen. We never really liked grocery shopping that much to begin with. And then with inflation, it got extra unfun. But let me tell you what's extra super unfun. Alaska prices. Oh my God, grocery prices here are the freaking worst. We've definitely found that smaller towns have way, way, way higher prices. So your best bet is to go shopping in Anchorage at places like Walmart. However, even then, I mean, it's not uncommon that we're finding things that are maybe like 
50 to even 100% more expensive than what we'd find on the mainland. It's really crazy. We fill up like a third of a shopping cart and it costs $175. And we buy like... like beans. <laughs> like like we... beans and like store brand, raisin brand. We do it's... not buy like organic vegetables. We do not buy anything. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. It's, it, the prices here are just unbelievable. So I know buying in bulk is not a new saving tip, but unfortunately when living in a small RV, we just don't have a lot of space. So while these potatoes are 53 cents per pound, instead of getting the 10 pound sack, which we used to buy, we're gonna be buying the five pound sack. Uh, not a huge price difference, but it all adds up. I have to confess, we were trying to find ridiculously priced items to show you because that's been the case everywhere. We were shopping near the place that we were camping at and a box of Oreos, like one of just like a normal pack was $8. Yeah, I mean like everywhere we've gone, including other Walmart locations across Alaska has just been like outrageously expensive. And it could but, be we've just been here a long time, and also we used to live in Seattle, so we're kind of used to, like, I, I don't think we really have a great grasp on how much things cost nowadays. We will keep you posted if this changes. Also, this Walmart is, like, surprisingly quiet. Most Walmarts that we go to are very chaotic, so whenever we're someplace that's just, like, pretty quiet, chill, big fan. Well, this is what $250 of groceries looks like. Uh, this is does not feel like $250 worth of food. A quarter grand, oh, that's sick. <laughs> her, her look says it all. 270. Jessica is not happy. Well, while spending $270 is not fun, the one benefit is that we don't have to bag anything. We can just literally roll it right back to our house and put everything away. You gotta look for the silver linings. In case you didn't know, you have to buy special RV toilet paper that dissolves really fast. Just kind of a weird RV thing. $270 later, we are done. All right, time to do laundry. We're over halfway done though. Groceries is the hardest mentally because it- Money. Money. And laundry is the hard, hardest physically just because it takes time and folding and and dumping is the grossest. Yeah, and dumping but, is the grossest. So we're, we're done with two of the three hardest. So Justin had said that we are headed to do laundry, finally, but turns out we're not. Uh, so we need to go to the post office to pick up some mail and the post office closes at five. It's currently 2.30 and we're just a little bit worried that we wouldn't be able to get there before it closes. Uh, so now is maybe a good time to talk about how we get our mail, which is one of the most common questions that we get. We essentially work with a program called Escapees who have physical campgrounds all across the United States. Our mail is sent to a campground that's located in Texas. They scan the front of it, which we can view through an online portal, and then we either decide whether it should be shred, uh, forwarded to us, or alternatively, they can open it and scan it. So right now, we're going to go pick up the mail that we decided to get forwarded to us. You can do everything from just ship it via normal USPS, which can take up to 30 days or even longer depending upon where you are like remote places like Alaska or you can get it shipped through UPS if you need something a bit quicker. Hey Jess, have fun. Jess and I each have a list of responsibilities. She gets mail, I dump the black tank. So uh, we have to come back to the post office. What? Turns out this post office for some reason only allows you to pick up general delivery between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. What? Get our mail. Wait, what? They have a two hour window? I can't believe the amount of RVers that are in Alaska. Most people who live in their RV full time get their mail via general delivery, which is how we were gonna pick it up. So I'm wondering if they just decide to kind of like, they don't wanna have a bunch of like out of town people waiting for general delivery, like clogging up the lines normally. Pro tip, if you're RVing in Alaska, general delivery is available like in almost literally every town in the United States so long as they have a post office. I don't actually know now why I chose Anchorage, so perhaps that was not a good choice. Yeah, well, we don't do it very often. No, so. we don't. I guess that means no, time to do laundry. Maybe. <laughs> what, what if we did it tomorrow? I walked up while Justin was talking to the camera, and I think he was talking about how we have, like, different roles, and 
Justin is our laundry guru. I'm your dump daddy. <laughs> You're also my laundry Larry. Whenever I finish dumping our black tank, Jessica always says, thanks dump daddy. Thanks dump daddy. I don't know why I'm so proud of that. <laughs> All right, are you ready to go to the laundromat, finally? Oh, dump daddy? Yeah. We just pulled up to the laundry spot. If you look at it on the satellite images in Google Maps, this parking lot was empty. And right now, it is absolutely packed with cars. I'm sorry, Jess, but it looks like we might not be able to. You have no clothes left, sir. You just need to figure it out. I know, but oh, I. Oh, look there's... at this giant parking this is a, space. No, you can't park here. This is the, for the restaurant. What? This is for the restaurant. There's... I don't even see. Maybe it closed. It probably closed up shop because nobody can park here. What I must do? A... Oh, it's Cleaning World. That's uh, what we're looking for. You found it. Maybe we'll just park here. Is that good? Uh. Maybe pull in more? Hello? This is what I'm gonna buy. You're gonna uh, buy one? Yeah. This trailer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was just honking at us in the parking lot and I thought we did something wrong. And she gets out of her car and runs over. She's like, I'm buying an Alto trailer. She's right there, her name is Lupe. But uh, she was so excited about it. I told Lupe to watch our videos. Lupe, if you see this, hi. Whenever anybody honks at us when we have our trailer, I just automatically assume that like our door is open or dragging some kind of wire or something. A lot of laundromats are uh, card operated. So basically you go to a machine, you buy a card, it's typically like a dollar and then you put some credits on it. That's cool if you go to the same laundromat every week, but we don't obviously, we're traveling constantly. It can be pretty wasteful to buy all these cards for a dollar. Also, they usually only let you put like increments of five to $10. So let's say you're almost done drying and you need like five more minutes, you gotta put another $5 on, you waste it. So anyway, what I do is I open up Google Maps and I type coin laundry and I'll even like look at the photos of the units on uh, Google reviews to make sure they've got little quarter slots. The machines look really nice, but it's super small. So I'm not gonna film in there cause they got a bunch of employees like folding commercial <laughs> laundry for like hotels. So yeah. You know what laundry looks like. Dude, so there are six employees in there doing laundry and they're really nice. So I just like was chatting with the guy at the counter and I'm like, man, are you doing all this for like hotels? And he like smiles and he goes, uh, it's confidential. What does that mean? It's confidential. Why would it be confidential? I don't mafia? know. <laughs> Is there an Alaskan mafia? The linens look too nice to be like a prison yeah, or something. Well, I was say like a brothel? No, a brothel. If you have any guesses why a probably hotel wouldn't want you to know where they're getting their laundry done. Let us know. Is it finally time to check off our mail? We didn't complete it. But we went there. That doesn't count. But we went there. That doesn't count. It's just getting that. It's half? Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll post about it on Instagram. So follow us on Instagram. And then you'll- yeah, For our riveting mail content. Yeah. Did we or did we not get our mail? It's less about the mail and more about the sense of accomplishment. Follow us on Instagram and subscribe while you're at it. Would you like a beer? Yeah. Can you do me a favor? What? Can you set those down on the bed? Mmm, <laughs> hot laundry. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know this about me, I love being hot, like hot springs, hot tubs, and there's literally nothing better than hot, good smelling laundry. <sighs> I asked the owner of that laundromat if we could take a photo from inside of the laundry machine, which admittedly is a very, very weird request. 
And I was like, totally cool if you don't want me to. And he said yes, but he wanted me to use a specific machine and then stood behind us the entire time we got the photo. And it was extra cute because Jess couldn't reach the top laundry machine. And then he went and got a stool for Jess to stand on. Yeah, it's a very weird Some, vibe. Something about the confidential laundry clients they have. They really don't want to expose them. I'm, I'm checking it off. We've got a serious issue with asking permission to record things. Jess and I are like very Midwestern. We're severely like. shy, and like we definitely don't ever want to be those YouTubers who like prank old people in Walmart. But I don't even feel comfortable asking for permission. You know, frankly, that was a huge accomplishment. Me asking that guy politely if I could take a photo from inside yeah, his laundry if machine. Yeah, just exposed his undercover brothel laundry ring okay one more we're almost done with our chores it is 5 30 and we still haven't gotten propane or really found a place that we're gonna camp tonight we found we stayed in this really cool place like a month ago and it was kind of difficult to get to and i think most of our viewers can't fit there but i think we've got some options available to us but yeah these days are really like a time warp they just like disappear but we do have these killer views the last chore of the day. We use propane for a lot. Uh, space heating inside the trailer to heat up our water. We have a two burner stove uh, that we use for, I don't know. Probably half of our meals in Alaska because it's so cloudy here. We have two 20 pound propane tanks. They last forever. We don't have to fill up a lot, maybe every three to four weeks. Depending on where you are in the country, it'll range from three to four dollars a gallon. It's usually pretty close to how much gas costs. I'll typically put about eight to nine gallons in once a month. What is that, 30 bucks? Yep. It's, uh, it's amazing how much this powers. It keeps us hot every night. We can keep the trailer toasty warm, even in the coldest temperatures. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Uh, do you want to go ask the guy to fill it up and I'll top off with gas? Woo, you get a little show. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Aw, he said have a blessed day. That's a nice guy. Are you putting the tanks back on? All right. Whoa, look at us. Woo. All right, all we have to do is find a campsite. Oh man, yeah, it's just like hidden, dude. Yay, our secret spot is still a secret. You wanna get out and help me back in? Yeah. The color of the water is so pretty here. <laughs> Look at the spot. Wow, that's incredible. Oh my God, the spot's amazing. We'll unhook it and we'll roll it back to about here. And then, oh, does it get better than this? Look at this, Jess. I don't think the camera does it justice. It's insane. It's so beautiful. Well, not a bad home for the night. Looks pretty good to me. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you do anything differently during your RV chores or if you have any questions about our process. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps get this video in front of other potential RVers. And if you want to see our adventures from the southernmost part of the United States, QS Florida, all the way up to Tuktoyaktuk, the northernmost point that you can drive in North America, all the way in the Arctic Circle of Canada, please be sure to follow our adventures. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>